tonight with the breaking headline late today that they are now tracking a suspected Chinese spy balloon hovering over the northern U.S. The Chinese spy balloon is part of a much broader intelligence program. A diplomatic row has erupted between the U.S. and China. The U.S. has decided to monitor the balloon instead of shooting it down, even though it's apparently still gathering intelligence as we speak. Why hasn't the Biden administration shot the spy balloon down? And the message they're trying to send the world is, look, these guys can't even do anything about a balloon flying over U.S. airspace. How can you possibly count on them? Another day, another huge embarrassment for Joe Biden. And like all the others, the Afghanistan withdrawal failure, the border crisis, the economy. This Chinese balloon fiasco is putting you in danger. But this screw up may be even worse than the ones before it. Because tonight, I'll show you how the Chinese spy balloon proves something that perhaps we should have realized years ago. We are at war with China, and we have been for some time. It's a cold war, so far at least, but their blatant show of surveillance in our airspace and beyond shows that our communist comrades are willing to up the ante. This would mean it's the fourth one that the U.S. has shot down since about a week ago when they first shot down the Chinese surveillance balloon. Tonight, the possibilities of what could come next and how China could use this Cold War to take down the United States. Tonight, Cold War with China, the playbook to take down the U.S. Exposed. One of these days, I'm going to come on this show and say, hi, America. I got nothing. I got nothing. Everything's fine. But it ain't tonight. So what exactly is going on in the skies over North America? Well, what was happening under the sea with the Nordstrom uh, or Nordstrom, the, uh, the uh, Nord Stream pipeline? What the Nordstrom one was bad, too. I mean, there were sweaters coming up. Anyway, anyway, uh, what, 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 what happened? Who did that? Did we do that? We have some big boy pants uh, that we need to put on and ask some real serious questions beginning tonight because I believe we are marching to war. But were they mistakes? Four objects now have been fired on and destroyed in both Canada and the United States by the U.S. military. Four. And so far, the only official word we've gotten from the government is that one of them, which they first said was no threat and a weather balloon, was a Chinese spy balloon. Lawmakers have been screaming for transparency, at least some explanation on, hey, um, we don't want to run out of missiles. What are you firing at? But surprise, surprise, the Biden administration ain't really saying very much. We are, I guess, expected to believe this is normal. America, this is not normal. Yesterday, I talked to senators, I talked to House members who told me they went into a security briefing. This is constitutional. You're supposed to go in for an intelligence briefing. You can ask any question and get your questions answered. They walked out knowing less than they did when they walked in. It's a fiasco at best. In my lifetime, in your lifetime, do you ever remember anything like this? We're shooting balloons out of the sky with missiles? Okay, let's start with what we supposedly do know. According to the government, with what little information they've told us, the first object was shot down on February 4th, and it was a Chinese spy balloon that is just part of an intelligence gathering operation, which has flown over more than 40 countries. Okay, I didn't know that at the beginning when they were saying that it was no threat and a weather balloon. They, gee, that's kind of weird, isn't it? Because it sounds like the government actually knows quite a lot. I mean, they know about the program. They know about the 40 plus countries that these balloons have flown over for spying reasons. Why hadn't we heard about this? And the government probably has standards and procedures in place to respond. Well, no, actually, ha uh -uh, they don't. Let me go take you through this timeline. This is the up, up and away in my climate change balloon. Uh, yeah, I'll be here all night. Okay, starting January 28th, it was Saturday, 
The balloon was first detected in the U.S. airspace near Alaska. We weren't told about it. It just shows up. <laughs> Where could that have come from? We didn't know. We didn't know anything about it. Remember that point. That's very important. First day, we didn't know anything about it, except NORAD said, it's, it's totally safe. It's not a problem. No threat. Okay, let's move on. Monday, January 30th, NORAD picks up the trail as the balloon prances into Canadian airspace. Okay, an adversarial surveillance tool hovering over Canada. No response from their military or our military and zero communication from the government. Remember, they don't even know what it is at this point. <laughs> so then we go to Tuesday, January 31st. The balloon moved to northern Idaho. This time it was no longer in our backyard. It's in our house. Still nothing from the government. By Wednesday, the balloon had made its way to Montana and the government shut down all of the traffic, the air traffic at the Billings Logan International Airport. It was grounded for two hours, but they didn't give any official word or explanation of what was going on. Meanwhile, at that same time, something else was going on. Blinken was meeting quietly with the officials at the Chinese embassy. Now keep this in mind, because I'm going to come back to our climate change balloon. Now this awareness of any of this stuff, non-existent to us, okay? We didn't know this until somebody uploaded a video to Twitter, uh, and his name is Chase Doak. We had him on the air like a day or two after. Uh, he put it up on Twitter. He saw it on Wednesday, but then on Thursday, he put it up on Twitter, and the images of the balloon started blowing up social media. It was only then that the Pentagon finally issued a statement verifying what was going on. Uh, yeah, uh, that's a... Balloon. It's from China, we think, but there's not a, no, no problems with it at all. Is it a spy balloon? Doubt it. Why, why would you even say that? Really? It almost seems like the government was content to let this balloon casually just strafe sensitive military installations without telling us. But then, oh, I'd get away with it too if it weren't for those pesky kids on social media. A single photographer in Montana forced the government's hand. Now, why the secrecy? Hmm? What's up with this balloon? Well, later that day, Secretary Blinken, in a completely unrelated announcement, said he was postponing his upcoming trip to China, which makes me kind of wonder, was Blinken's trip connected to the balloon. I mean, what was the reason for all the secrecy? Why, why, did they, why did we hesitate on acting on a spy balloon that was near Alaska? Now, I wanna show you the predicted flight path of the balloon. See, there it is starting in China. Oh, by the way, we found out today, they had been uh, tracking it since it left China. So we knew where it came from. We knew about the 40 spy balloons and we did nothing. They could have shot it down in the waters west of Alaska, but they didn't. Said they let it travel down to Alaska, down through Canada, across the United States. Hey, make sure you take some pictures of some of our secret bases and our, our nuclear missile silos. Those are great this time of year. Um, could I ask, was the Biden administration reluctant to act because, I don't know, they're on the take from China? Or could it be they're just so incompetent? Or could it be that they were, um, oh, I don't know, trying to destroy America? No, no. <gasps> could it be that they didn't want to blow it up because it would damage Blinken's upcoming trip on China? Did we trade national security for something Biden really, really, really wants to talk to President Xi about? I mean, what on earth could be so important, right? I mean, besides the Christian nationalists and pro-lifers and those 
parent-teacher meetings that are just getting out of control, what is, according to this administration, our biggest national security threat? Well, Biden has said it himself, quote, not a joke. You know what the Joint Chiefs told the greatest red fate America was? Global warming. Yeah, global warming. Not China, not Russia. Global warming. That's been their focus since day one. I am telling you, in the next few weeks, you're going to learn some things about the government you're not going to like. You're not going to like what they are doing. You know, for global warming, they're destroying us and dismantling it. And you don't have any idea what's happening. I remember when we talked about this a couple of years ago, when Biden was like, well, it's just, that's what it, I wondered how the government, how their ridiculous one track mind would wind up putting us in danger. I never thought it would be Chinese spy balloons, you know? Hey, look at that. What a pretty balloon. Smile, kids. What was Blinken supposed to meet the Chinese about? Well, an archived article from Bloomberg was published on Thursday morning, February 2nd, before the Chinese spy balloon became public. What was the major item Blinken wanted to discuss? Quote, he said the two sides would look for modest gains such as expanded contacts over climate change. <laughs> Isn't that great? America, how many times does this have to happen? How many times does the Biden administration have to sacrifice our national security at the altar of climate change? So what happens? Okay, that just passes and we all go, okay, I just wanna go away for the weekend. And then on Friday, they shoot down another object. This time though, they caught it in time right over Alaska. Saturday, a third object in Canada, and on Sunday, a fourth one over Lake Huron in Michigan. Again, not normal for kids who are just starting to play this game. There is no precedent for any of this, ever. But the government, wow, they're just telling us, you know what their first response was? Might be aliens. What? Listen to this from CNN. And not even the pilots apparently were really able to identify what they saw. And just to take you back for a sec, on Thursday, the, uh, the U.S. defense officials sent F-35 fighter jets up to try to figure out what this object was that was flying around near Alaska. Those pilots, we have learned, have given very conflicting accounts of what they actually experienced, with some pilots saying that the, the object interfered with the plane's sensors, other pilots saying that they didn't really experience that, other pilots saying that when they looked at the object, they could identify no identifiable, uh, identifiable propulsion system and they did not know how it was actually staying in the air cruising at that altitude of about 40,000 feet. So we have anonymous sources suggesting E.T. was up there screwing with my defibrillators in the plane. And it doesn't stop there. The U.S. Air Force General that oversees all of our airspace over North America uh, was asked recently, can we rule out aliens? Uh, his quote, I don't rule anything out. What? Then he went on to describe the objects in more detail. Quote, I'm not going to categorize them as balloons. We're calling them objects for a reason. I'm not able to categorize how they stay aloft. Could be magic. It could be a gaseous type of balloon inside a structure, or it could be some sort of propulsion system. But clearly... They were able to stay aloft. Aliens, aliens. There is a greater chance that it was the wizard returning to the state fair in the big balloon marked Omaha. Are you kidding me? Now, Fox News reported U.S. officials told them that all of these objects were balloons. The official described the object as, quote, a small metallic balloon with a tethered payload. It probably could have been some kid with a Mylar balloon that just floated away. It's oddly specific given the fact that one of the nation's top Air Force generals described something completely different, not to mention whatever sources CNN is talking to. Uh, just so you know, it's not an alien, okay? Are you telling me aliens traveled from multiple light years away from us? to visit and they keep their spaceship and all their extra special stuff parked upstairs and then they come down in a balloon 
and we shoot them out of the sky? I don't think so. Whatever officials spoke to Fox News, their account seems to line up with what Congress has been briefed on. Chuck Schumer said Sunday, all three objects we shot down are believed to be balloons. So why the conflicting? Let me just go through this. No threat, then weather balloon, then it was a spy balloon, then we got other balloons, and they're possibly aliens. Well, they're balloons, but they're the size of cars. Well, they're really not. Have you ruled out aliens? Well, not entirely. Yes, then today, no aliens. These are balloons, probably just private balloons, but nobody has claimed them. What? Why are we shooting them down? We don't even know what they are. We don't know if they're dangerous. We have no idea. And why are we sending a missile to the payload? Why don't we just <coughs> hit him with a dart and bring the balloon down? My gosh, why was the first one allowed to traverse the country and these are not? I'll tell you one reason. Because Joe looked guilty as hell. And now he knows he didn't pass the test with the American people or China, and he looks weak. Got to kill anything that comes in to our airspace. I don't have any idea whether all of these balloons came from China, but I do know that the first balloon exposed this administration big time, and we watched it launch. They had no idea how to handle the Chinese aggression while at the same time prioritizing climate change discussions with President Xi. China made them look weak. Then they scrambled to shoot down everything that looked remotely suspicious. Does it look like a balloon? Get it. Why were we not prepared for this if we knew that they had 40 of these things that had crossed over into other people's airspace? The chairman of the House Intelligence Committee recently said, quote, we don't really have an adequate radar system, and we certainly don't have an integrated missile defense system. We're going to have to begin to look at the United States airspace as one that we need to defend. I'm sorry, haven't we always looked at our airspace that way? I thought we did. I thought maybe that should be really kind of close to the top of things our military does. No planes that aren't supposed to be there fly into our airspace. I mean, here we are. We're supposed to be the most capable military in the world. How many billions of dollars have you spent just on the missiles that you seem to be firing at birthday balloons? Are we really this much of a clown show? We can't protect our own airspace against balloons? God forbid they send an old World War II biplane, we're all gonna die. China is obviously watching and testing us, but for what? Well, an Air Force general recently predicted war with China will happen within the next two years. And the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee agreed. Okay, good, good. Everyone seems to agree that Chinese, the use of the balloon, is insignificant. I'm not so sure. The use of unconventional means of warfare, very important, is exactly the way China has been preparing to fight this war. In fact, we're basically already fighting a war. We have been for a long time, and it's been a cold war, and you can't really think conventionally anymore. The Chinese are not operating that way, and it is by design, and I'll show you when we come back. I don't know about you, but I sleep like a rock. I sleep like a rock. I don't have a worry on my mind, you know? Yeah, sure, the world's being held together with duct tape, you know, and a little bit of Elmer's glue, but I mean the good stuff. Every day we're thrown into new distractions from the reality that we're all about to face. Between the government trying to print their way out of debt, global military conflicts, looming food shortages, balloons, what are you gonna do for your birthday party if they're all gone, blown up by the government? It's a necessity, preparedness, it's a necessity. Um, next week, uh, come with a little notepad to watch the show because we're gonna show you things that you need to prepare. But when it comes to food, My Patriot Supply has their three-month emergency food kit. It comes packed with tasty, 
and I do mean tasty. Not that I've ever tried them when there wasn't anything in the kitchen and I was too lazy to go to the store. Didn't happen, honey, didn't. Uh, all the meals are over 2,000 calories. And right now you can automatically get uh, $200 in free survival gear with each kit that you order. These products will save the day when a crisis comes in and it is coming. Self-reliance, your option, do it now. MyPatriotSupply.com, get $200 worth of free survival essentials with your three-month month emergency food kit. Everything is in stock, ready to go. Free shipping, MyPatriotSupply.com. Okay, I mentioned before the break that we have to change the way we think regarding the Chinese and how they're fighting us. For example, a balloon kind of seems like something you bring to a birthday party, you know. Uh, but Chinese satellites, they can get all the intelligence they want that the balloon could get, I'm pretty sure. We've heard the Biden administration say the same thing, but what else could a balloon be used for? Well, the Washington Examiner recently pointed out testimony during a joint session of Congress back in 2015. The topic was, how vulnerable are we to EMPs? I want you to listen to this part. Even meteorological balloons could be used to loft a nuclear weapon 30 kilometers high to make an EMP attack. Oh, so that's how our, our enemies think. It's how the Chinese think. Over the past two weeks, they've proven that we are not prepared. We're dummies. We are in a cold war with China. We're about to get into a hot war with Russia. But Team Biden, well, we gotta stop all the oil and get all the furry bunnies masked or something because it's going to get hot or cold, rainy or deserty real fast. They're hiding their heads in the sand, including the enablers in the media. I recently saw this article in Politico. What cold war? U.S. trade with China hits record high. Uh-huh. The article references recent Commerce Department data that shows a new trade record between the U.S. and China, $690 billion. So we're really friends, Charlie Brown. Oops, did I take the football? Now, I wonder if there's a historical reference here. Let me show you this article from British Library that describes trade in Europe before 1914. <laughs> How weird! Wow! Trade between countries like Germany, France, UK, and the United States exploded leading up to World War I. The economic situation led one British writer and a member of parliament to declare that war had then become irrational. No one's gonna threaten to annihilate each other because we're all tied together economically and times are good. Two world wars followed right after that. No one studies history in a, anymore and no one appears to be willing to admit what is happening with China. They're in trouble. A retired Air Force general named Robert Spaulding recently wrote a book on what China has been doing, and it reminded me of another book I saw a few decades ago written by members of the Chinese Army. I'm going to come back to the Chinese book, book in a second. But Spaulding's book, Stealth War, describes in detail what we're up against. China's unconventional Cold War with us includes intellectual property theft, infiltration of domestic society and institutions, the erosion of domestic political and economic institutions, fair and unequal trade practices, espionage in the United States, foreign investment manipulation, debt trap diplomacy, and Belt and Road. Ah, uh, hello? This is describing the Cold War with the Soviet Union. But we didn't downplay it then. That's why we won. All of this reminded me about a book written by two members of the Chinese, Chinese Communist military back in 1999. It was called Unrestricted Warfare. I highly recommend you pick up a copy. It was written in the aftermath of the first Gulf War. That's when they realized, uh-oh, we're really behind. The speed, lethality, and precision of Desert Storm scared the crap out of China. They knew they could never defeat the United States in a conventional war. Instead, and until they could catch up militarily, they hypothesized using globalization as a tool to fight the United States. The authors called it a non-military war. And what they actually list out is several ways of fighting, directly uh, quoting the book here, psychological warfare, smuggling warfare, economic, 
media warfare, drug warfare, network warfare, espionage, technical warfare, creating monopolies, uh, resource warfare, plundering the world's resources, cultural warfare, international law warfare. Any of those sound familiar? These are just some of the ways China assessed, well, we could probably beat him if we did some of these things. They said these have, quote, the same and even greater destructive force than military warfare. What they're describing is a quiet war fought by unconventional methods. It's been going on for decades and we're not talking about it. They've been softening us and biding their time. Now they feel bold enough to violate our airspace. It's a shark bump. They're just testing. What will they do? What will they do? Some of the examples they listed in unconventional warfare probably sounded familiar to you. In fact, the plan appears as though they're actually following it to the letter. And I'll show it to you when we come back. In case you think that home title fraud is only the kind of thing that happens to other people, I mean, honey, lovey, we don't have a home that anybody would steal. Um, let me play for you here the audio of a uh, convicted thief who forged names on homes like your home. Nobody thinks that I can take their house and borrow against the house. Oh no, I have title insurance for that. No, it's in my name, or he would have to get some special document. They would call me. You know, nobody's calling you. After I've stolen the title, borrowed against it, or sold the property, or done whatever I've done with it, it's 60 to 90 days to even figure out that they're the victim of this crime. You know, by that point, you start getting foreclosure notices, and you realize you've got four mortgages on your house. Not only that, you don't even own your home anymore. It's not even in your name. You could be a victim and not even know it. Here's how to protect yourself and verify your home's title is still in your name. Just go to HomeTitleLock.com, use the promo code RADIO, register your address for a no-obligation home title report. It's a $100 value free. Get your free home title report at HomeTitleLock.com, promo code RADIO. So one of the biggest reasons we have failed to counter China is that we've just misinterpreted what their true intent was. I don't know if we've misinterpreted it or we were okay with it because they're making things easy. Prices are cheap. Biden can get rich. All of his kids will be rich. We've seen it a million times over the past decades. Why is China committed, committed to stealing intellectual property rights? They just do it. Oh, well, they're shady. But they're trying to transition to a better economy. You know, China is the future. Why is China scooping up so many resources and gaining a monopoly on dang near everything? Why is China targeting us so much with espionage and cyber attacks? Well, a little book called Unrestricted Warfare came out in 1999. It explains all of it. The actual intent is to use all of these things together, which in their own words have, quote, the same and even greater destructive military force uh, than, uh, sorry, greater force than military warfare. Huh. Wow. So they have been fighting a war. And the vast majority of Washington has been completely oblivious. No one has heard about this, huh? Wow. Or maybe people picked sides and they were like, I'm going to be with China because I could get rich and so can all my kids. I want, to take, I want to take you to this book. This is taken directly from their book. And if you look at all of the means of unconventional warfare, and you take them all together as a whole, it's kind of telling. First one, psychological, media, and culture. Now, have you noticed how many Hollywood movies are made with Chinese money now? and how their culture is actually being introduced to us through Hollywood movies. Their stranglehold on Hollywood gives a whole new meaning to the words red carpet. It's exactly what happened to, with uh, Germany in the United States and Hollywood. There's probably not a movie out there that Hollywood wasn't tweaking after bowing to their Chinese masters. Movies like Iron Man 3, World War Z, Bohemian Rhapsody, Star Trek, Alien, Skyfall, Doctor Strange, all changed to appease China. And China's psychological warfare doesn't end with Hollywood. The media, mainstream media, another big target. BBC takes money from Huawei, who was sanctioned by the US government. 
Chinese state-run media paid over $1.6 million to the American news outlets in a massive advertising campaign. Time Magazine, The Los Angeles Times, Foreign Policy Magazine, Financial Times, Boston Globe, and several others were all involved in various ways. These are just some of the examples of China's psychological warfare, and their target is American and Western culture as a whole. You kids on TikTok? The next time you hear anyone in Hollywood or the media give some lame excuse for partnering with China, read them this quote from Unrestricted Warfare. They state the purpose is manipulating what people see and hear in order to lead public opinion along. Well, they're just nice people. And have you had Chinese food? It's delicious. The next one is smuggling, drugs, economic, and international law. Huh. Hey, you know where all that fentanyl's coming from? China. Fentanyl is now the leading cause of death in Americans aged 18 to 45 years old. More Americans are dying from fentanyl than suicide, car accidents, COVID, and cancer. Hmm. I've been saying this one for a long time. Do you remember what the British did to the Chinese? Do you remember in the 1800s? What was? Oh, they were getting opium and smuggling and targeting their citizens and their people. Huh. It's a drug war. That's how they collapsed China. Huh. 99% of the precursor drugs for fentanyl, 99% come from China. Yes, the cartels used to make it, but now they're just shipping it right directly to them. It comes both through the mail and smuggled across our southern border. A lot of people have commented that China is just doing this so they can make a buck any way they can. But let me read this excerpt from Unrestricted Warfare on Drug Warfare. The description says its purpose is to, quote, spreading disaster in other countries. The war on drugs has a whole new meaning now. Everything else we saw largely brought to light under Trump during the Trump administration regarding Chinese, China's abuse of intellectual property rights, unfair trade practices, all of it is in the book, Unrestricted War. They use international trade laws to keep the operation alive and active. The most recent example was when China took their case to the WTO to halt Biden's export ban of semiconductors. International trade law was one of the biggest areas of vulnerability that China mentioned in unrestricted warfare. And they've been gaming it now for decades. Tech, monopolies, cyber is the next one. Gee, you don't think they have any tech connections, do you? The cyber onslaught has been insane. And I'm not talking about ransomware attacks or things like that. When they decide to send a cyber attack, they go right for the throat. In 2004, a single Chinese cyber espionage ring hacked US military labs, NASA, and the World Bank. In 2006, they hacked the US State Department. They hacked the Commerce Department, the Naval War College, the US Senators, the Commerce Secretary, even Lockheed Martin's F-35 program. How much worse will it get if a large portion of the world adopts Chinese 5G technology? Huawei ring a bell? That's exactly what they had in mind when the authors of Unrestricted Warfare wrote about the creation of technological monopolies. The entire world is just playing right into their hands. Espionage? Oh, I don't know. Or as they say in France, espionage. I, um, a few months ago, the nonprofit human rights group Safeguard Defenders released a report. It exposed 110 Chinese police stations all over the world. Four Chinese police stations were in the United States. What? Chinese agents operated out of these police stations here in the U.S. to spy on dissidents and threaten their families if they didn't return to China. God only knows what else they're up to. How does this happen in our country and nobody seems to care? I've talked about it on the air. 
nobody seemed to care. How about all the money that's going into all of our universities? China has been so incredibly efficient on infiltrating our own government officials, especially the Democrats, but it's in with the Republicans as well. Chinese spy programs have been linked to Dianne Feinstein, hmm. Eric Swalwell, thang thang, and Representative Judy Chu. Now, these are just the ones we caught, not to mention the Biden family business deals. Democrats clearly have a China problem. However, may I point out Mitch McConnell and his wife, tons of corruption and Chinese money. So overall, there's been 160 incidents of Chinese espionage since the year 2000. And these are just the ones the government has acknowledged in the news. 89 of these incidents occurred after Xi Jinping came to power. This is only going to get worse. Next one, resource warfare. Oh, this one's good. The authors of Unrestricted Warfare listed, listed resource warfare as the top strategy. They described it as, quote, grabbing riches by plundering stores of resource economic aid warfare. Hmm. What does that mean? Grabbing riches by stealing resources. Hmm. Well, I know they have an awful lot of land. That's a resource here. I know that we're selling our strategic oil reserve to China. Um, but what else could that mean? Well, China leads the world in both steel and aluminum production. We don't do that anymore. They have the largest reserves of rare earth elements than anyone on the planet because we don't dig for ours. Um, the same ingredients for the green revolution, build back better, are all in China. China produces 63% of all of these materials, all of them. We produce 12%. Houston, I think we have a problem. Is anyone paying attention? My hope is that recent Chinese spy balloon is waking some people up that we're in fact in a cold war with China and we have been for a long time. Whether Washington accepts that or believes it, the Chinese actually do. They've been fighting this war for a very, very long time. And we are really far behind, but there is a new twist to the plot. As I said at the beginning of the show, who blew up the Nord Stream pipeline? Seymour Hirsch has come out yet with another article and interview on this. He insists that it's the United States. Intelligence will not give our senators a briefing. If indeed it was the United States that blew up the Nord Stream pipeline, we're in deep trouble, gang. We're in deep trouble. Because that's an act of war. How is the rest of the world going to react? Well, how are the French going to react? How are the people in England going to react? People in Germany, they're going to love us. Wait a minute, so it was you guys? that made us cold all winter? We've been having to burn firewood because you guys blew it up? Nobody in Congress knew a word about it. No one could get a briefing. But I got news for you. Russia, whether it's right or not, Russia is now calling the Security Council at the UN to figure out, hey, who did blow up the Nord Stream uh, pipeline? Is that going to be a problem for anybody? I've wrestled with this now for almost two weeks, trying to think, how do I approach this? Should we approach this? Do you want to know, or should we take the blue pill? We must take the red pill. We must find the actual answer. Hopefully it's not us, but I think it is. We must know that answer. You know, last time we said something like this, it was like, if they could do this to the president, you think they care about you? If they could blow this up knowing that thousands of people in Europe, our allies, could die because of lack of heat, we might as well be living in Germany. Back in a minute.
Sometimes you got to ask yourself, when is enough enough? You're living with the pain, even every day or often, moderate, severe. When you had about enough, you come to me today on my daughter's wedding. And you ask me, what can, what can I do to, to fight this pain? Let me give you a relief factor. Relief factor, one of the best things that ever happened to me. But I'm a mobster, so what do I know? Not a lot of good stuff happens to mobsters. Realist, uh, I'm sorry, uh, relieffactor.com. My wife told me to start taking it, and I obey my wife because she loves me, and she's actually a better person than I am. But um, I started taking it. Three weeks later, you know, I'm running out, and I'm like, I don't think this made such a difference. And then I stopped taking it, and I'm like, ow, ow, ow. It's amazing. I take it every day. Three-week quick start, 1995. Do it now. Get your trial pack now at relieffactor.com or call 800-4-RELIEF. 800-4-RELIEF. That's relieffactor.com. We want to talk to Richard Grinnell, who is the uh, former U.S. ambassador to Germany. He was also the former acting director of National Intelligence, the agency that was created after 9-11 to kind of coordinate all intelligence. He would be a guy who could answer some questions now. Richard, how are you, sir? Glenn, thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here. It's mine. Um, I, I want to ask you, I, I have talked to several people now who have had uh, intelligence briefings just uh, yesterday uh, on the spy balloon. And while they wouldn't tell me anything that, would say, that was said, obviously, they both said, I left there more confused with more questions. I have no idea what's going on. That's not normal, is it? I mean, you know, a senator or a House member should walk in and be able to have their questions answered on, on what's, what we're shooting down in the sky, shouldn't they? Yeah, for sure. I mean, look, if you're part of an intelligence um, uh, committee where you are charged with oversight, you're charged by the people of the United States to be the one who's looking at the issues of the intelligence community to make sure we're spending our money correctly and that we're transparent. You should walk away from a briefing and say, I can tell the public that uh, I have seen all the information and all is okay. That is what the committees, the oversight committees all are right. charged to do. But we've got a real problem with Avril Haines, who's the current director of national intelligence. She's under fire from Democrats and Republicans because she's not transparent. Right. And and I mean, we're talking big things here. You know, well, somebody, a friend of mine uh, in Washington said, I'm not sure if they're making a mountain out of a molehill or a molehill out of a mountain. <laughs> I don't know what's I don't know what's happening. What do you suspect is going on with all of these balloons being shot down? Are we shooting down weather balloons? Is China involved? What is this? Well, we do know that China's involved. And I think that what's happening is, is that once again, the Biden administration has been caught flat footed and uh, they really are weak. Um, look, I, I think to explain this, um, we all know what America first means. We all know what right. it means to look at issues and put America first. But the Biden team from the very beginning, Glenn, made it perfectly clear that they were interested not in America first, but consensus, whether it's mm -hmm. consensus with the Europeans, consensus with the Chinese, they maximize, the Biden team maximizes calmness. They wanna make sure that the other side isn't upset with us. It's why when the Biden team came in and Germany was all upset about sanctions on this mm -hmm. Russian pipeline, it's why they dropped the sanctions on the Russian pipeline, because Germany was asking and they prioritized keeping Germany happy rather than keeping Americans safe. And, and I'll just tell you, after dropping the Trump sanctions on Putin's pipeline at the request of, of Germany, the Biden team and Senate Democrats launched in the Ukraine war. I don't think that you can go uh, anywhere away from that conclusion. I think when you signal to Putin that you're going to be weak and you're going to drop these sanctions, you are signaling to some uh, somebody like Vladimir Putin that you're weak and that you should be taken advantage of. Now, we can do that same thing with the Chinese balloons. We are sending a message when you allow that balloon to go across mm -hmm. the United States the entire time 
and you only shoot it down after there's public outrage in America, you are sending another signal that you are very weak. And this is what the Chinese so, read. They see it. Rich, I only have about three minutes here, and this is a complex, a complex question and answer. Um, you know, I, I don't know the Nord Stream pipeline. I know there's probably four or five countries that could do it. I don't see any of them that would have a reason to do it um, like we would have a reason to do it. But, uh, I mean, that's an act of war if that happened. I don't know if you think that's solved in your mind. Um, but we, we seem to be progressing towards a war with Russia, uh, stepping it up a little bit, you know, seemingly every day. And now it seems like we're in a Cold War with China. Are you seeing an Axis power uh, formulate between the two of them that we may be facing if we're not careful? Yeah, I, I think that we have to be very careful. We cannot make decisions and do things that push the Russians and the Chinese together so that they somehow form an alliance against us. Uh, there are natural um, things about the Russian-Chinese relationship where they shouldn't be friends, where they have complications, and we should seek to try to keep them apart as much as possible. That should be part of the U.S. goal, is to make sure that they don't work in tandem against us. That is a problem. And, and I do think that there are some easy things to do within the U.S. government to make sure that that's the case. Do I would just say that the Biden team is not doing that and that we see at the U.N. and in other places, Russia and China working together like never before. You know, Putin said once that he he said to Western reporters, your leaders don't get it. We're already in World War Three. Um, and I think China kind of feels like it's at war with us right now. And we're just kind of, you know, the public, especially just, you know, going along their happy way, not being told how serious this is. How serious is the situation that we find ourselves in right now? Russia has always been a problem, but China is a crisis. We need to act like it's a crisis. Um, we need to do much more to blunt the offense that the Chinese are under. Uh, we saw them really go unleashed after COVID. Uh, they, they, you know, were secret about everything that they knew. They used and weaponized the problems of COVID to benefit them. And I, I think that we've got to be very clear-eyed and Congress needs to jump on top of exactly what's happening and you start by demanding transparency from Avril Haines, the director of national intelligence. The, the intelligence community has a crisis on their hands, crisis of credibility. The public doesn't trust them. They think they weaponize right. against Republicans. They think they selectively leak. Right. She's got to confront this. Richard Grinnell, um, thank you for everything you've done for the country and continue to do for it and in California as well. Good night. Thank you. Thanks, Glenn.